Welcome back to the How to Python series. It's been a little while since I've done one of these. In fact, it's been so long I've even changed operating system. I'm now on Windows 11 rather than Windows 10, as you can see. Uh, but I thought I'd do one of these because, well, there was something I found out quite recently about a really simple way of doing colored logging. And I really want to do a video on that because a lot of tutorials make it very complicated. But I thought I would do a How to Python on simple logging uh, just for people that either don't know how it works, uh, didn't even know it was a thing, or just want to know more about it, because I thought, you know, it would be a nice little prerequisite to have. So as logging is part of the Python standard library, we don't need to pip install anything, all we need to do is do import logging and we're good to go. So logging is, is fairly simple, it sort of works like print, except you can control when and how stuff prints. So... To give you an example, we can just use the logging.log function. What this does is it takes a logging level as an integer and a message, which it says here is an object, but it's actually a string. So this integer level is essentially a logging priority or a measure of importance in a way. So it can be any non-zero positive integer. I don't actually know what happens if you pass a negative integer in. I've never tried it. But essentially, the lower the number you pass in, the less important the message is. So, for example, a number one would be, you know, there is a cloud in the sky somewhere in the world, and 50 would be, we're about to all be killed by a giant asteroid hurtling towards the Earth. It's sort of that, <laughs> sort of that sort of level. So there are five separate levels that logging provides. So at level 10, we have logging.debug, which just outputs debugging information for if something is going wrong, we need to work out, you know, how something works. There is logging level 20, which is info, which is what most of the information that you would normally see is, I suppose. So this is, well, just information about what's going on, I, I guess. The warning is logging level 30, and this is sort of saying that, you know, something might be wrong, you know, that you might be doing something that's not quite recommended, also that's not fully supported something might go wrong but it's not guaranteed it could still work then there's logging level 40 which is error which is normally used if you're suppressing errors in applications um you know something like servers or bots you know something that's going to be on constantly and you want to suppress the error per se so you don't want the, pr the program to exit but you do still want the error to be logged you would use error or uh, logging level 40 then there is logging level 50, which is critical, which is the highest of the default, although you can, of course, make new ones that go higher or fit anywhere in between. That's why there are gaps of 10, so you can fit any logging levels you want in between existing ones. But critical is basically the same as error, except it's saying that the program probably won't be able to uh, continue or recover from this, and it will probably crash or something won't work properly. It's, it's only a matter of time before something goes very wrong, basically, if you get a critical error. But thankfully for us, we don't actually have to remember these numerical values, as logging does provide some constants for us to use. So as an example, we can do logging.info, and that will set the logging level of this message to 20, and so, you know, it'll just be in uh, info messages, and then we can say, you know, this uh, is some info. But if we were to run this program now, uh, you'll notice that nothing is actually printed, and that's because the logger hasn't been set up. So there is a default level that logging provides, and that level is zero. And this is a special level because zero means not set. I'm presuming anything lower than zero also means not set. But what this means is that no logging messages are printed at all. So this is sort of the same as setting it to infinite in a way. But we can actually change the uh, the minimum level that is actually outputted by uh, calling logging oops uh, dot basic config and don't ask me why the logging level uses camel case I don't know it's the simple answer to that it is annoying but you know we just have to work with the tools we have here and then we can set the level to equal say logging uh, dot info and now if you run the program we'll get info root, this is some information. I'll talk about the formatting in a bit, but I do want to kind of show you that if you were to say put warning there, then you wouldn't get any information. But if you had uh, logging.log, logging.warning, uh, uh, this is a warning. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm, I can't, I can't ignore that typo. I, ah, why can I never type when doing these videos? My word. 
but we'll get uh, just the warning there. And if we set this to info, then we'll get the info and the warning. So this is a really good way for applications and libraries to have information that can be outputted and allow the user to see exactly which information is actually shown to them. So if they only want to see warnings and they can see warnings, or if they want to see everything the program is doing and they can activate the debugging mode and, um, <clears throat> and do that. A lot of applications and libraries uh, tend to put sensitive information in the, the debugging inf uh, info, like tokens or, you know, specific URLs. So do be careful of that if you are using the debug, make sure you're not kind of streaming or, or doing a video. Well, I suppose if you're doing a video, you can edit it out, but make sure, you know, that none of that goes public, um, ideally. On top of these default methods are, or are also shortcut methods. So instead of logging.log, logging.info, we can just do logging.info. Uh, and that is absolutely identical to, uh, as you can see, it's identical to the one above it. So it's just a nice little shortcut method. You have that for info, debug, warning, error, critical, all that. You can create new functions inside the logging library if you create extra logging levels. But if you're doing a statically typed program, MyPy does not like that at all. So it's it's just recommended that you don't do that and you just use the logging.log if you wanted to do those sort of messages. Instead of logging into the terminal, you can actually log to a file as well. So you can, in here, pass say file name equals log.txt. Run this, we won't get anything in the terminal, but we will get this file saying log.txt when I can find my mouse, there it is. And all that information will be in there. If we run it again, we'll see that the file is appended to However, if you don't want that behavior, then you can do, I think it's file mode, yeah. Uh, and then we can set that to W, it's so the same as, you know, with open. And it will actually overwrite the file on each run. Uh, so you don't get the information appended, you just get the new information every time you run the, uh, the file. And I think this is a good time to talk about the formatting, which is the last thing I'm going to talk about in this video, because this is just the basics of it after all. So we have, by default, the logging level, which is info the root, which I'll talk about in a second, and then this is some info which is obviously the message. Uh, the root is appearing because we are doing logging.info specifically, however we can create, and I'm actually going to get rid of, of this so I can um, uh, demonstrate things a bit easier, uh, but we can do log, for example, equals logging.getLogger, and then we can pass anything into here. So we could just do logger, for example. And instead of logging, we can do, oh God, hang on, uh, logging dot, right, I'm going to have to do it like this. <laughs> we can do log.info instead. And now instead of root, we get the actual logger name, in, in our case, logger. If, you, if you're working with a library, you can use uh, dunder underscore, or dunder name, sorry, and it will get the name of the file. In this case, it gets dunder underscore, or, or sorry, dunder main. Uh, but if you're, if it's an external file that is being imported in, it will use the name of the file, which is really useful for libraries. You can also change the way that this is formatted, uh, but by providing a format option to the actual quag. So we can do, say, uh, if you wanted the level name, do it like that, and then we wanted, say, a space, and then we wanted. Oh no, say so we wanted the actual message itself, so we could just do a uh, message. Uh, so we didn't want a name of the file, we don't care about that. We can just have info, this is some info, and then warning, this is some warning, and all that. Uh, there are plenty of other uh, variables that you can use. I'd recommend looking at the docs to find them all, as there are you know, a good number of them. One important one I will show off is uh, ASC time. And this outputs the date and time. For some reason in the European decimal format, it uses European decimals. I'm not really sure why it doesn't uh, default to the locale like the date, time and time libraries do, whatever. But either way, you know, it presents us with the date and time. If we just care about the time, for example, then we can do date format and override the date format. Uh, so this works in the same way as, you know, something like string format time. So we could just pass the hours, minutes and seconds. And then we run it, we just get the hours, the minutes, and the seconds. Then we get our logging level, and then we get our, our text. If we wanted the logging level actually aligned, 
For example, you can do, I think you could do like 5S or something. And it will line itself. Okay, so that's lining before, so I think it'd be 8. Or it'd be 7 for, I think uh, Critical has 8 characters, so I think it'd be that. And then everything's lined up like that. You, of course you can have, I think it's minus 8. And it will do it the other way around if I remember correctly, yeah. Uh, so if you wanted them aligned uh, neatly, you can you, you can do that as well. And then if anything critical comes up, then it will uh, obviously take up the extra little bit of space. Yeah, that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about with basic logging. As you can see, this is really very useful for getting um, output out of libraries and applications. It's just generally easier than using print statements unless you're just uh, you know, doing it really quickly for debugging or whatever. But having logging in there is just a permanent way for not only you but for other people to have the information that they want when they want it. So if they don't want it at all then they just don't set the logging at all. But if they do want it, they set the logging, they set the warning, they set, you know, or they set the level, sorry. They set the formatting, they set whatever they want. Um, and it's just all ready to go because your library or application already has it. So it's really useful as you can see. But yeah, with that I'm going to end it here. Uh, I want to thank all my amazing patrons on screen now. One pound a month and you can be on that screen too. And I'll see you in the next video where we talk about coloured logging. That will be next week, pro hopefully on Monday. I imagine it will be on Monday. I'm going to record it now. So I imagine it will be out next Monday. So I'll see you for that.